In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Sparazdikam, brothers and sisters. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna the Highest. These are the words of the people of Jerusalem as our Christ enters in on the ass of a colt, a mere donkey. He does this in, in fulfillment of the prophecies of the Old Testament. That uh, this is going to be the one day that our Lord enters in to Jerusalem and is recognized as king, as an earthly king. He is king to all the Jews on this day. But he would surely soon not fulfill their expectations. Our Lord, our God, like many of us know, that often does not fulfill the wishes of our needs and our wants and our desires. And this can lead us to a little bit of a battle with doubt, this angst within our hearts of who this God truly is. Surely throughout all the history of, of our Christian church, all the main heresies of our faith, or people have split apart, have been over this main thing of who it is that Jesus is, who it is that we say that Christ is, and who do we believe Him truly to be? And we have argumentations over it. But as simple believers, not really theologically inclined in our minds, we have this angst too, this thought, who is Jesus to me? Who is Christ in my life? And so many times, brothers and sisters, that we build up our Lord to want to meet our own expectations of who He is, what He should do for me. And this, like the people that we hear about in the the gospel today, who joyfully ran behind and before the, the cult of an ass, throwing down branches so that he can prepare his walk into Jerusalem, waving palms as a, as a symbol of the king coming into Jerusalem. Like them, we have expectations of our Lord that soon sometimes we find out are not met. In the case of the gospel story today, we know that Christ did not come to be an earthly king. He did not come to save Israel from its oppressors, not in an earthly sense. He came to save Israel and each and every one of us from the oppressors of our spiritual state, from the demons, and from death itself. And we shall commemorate that next Sunday with his defeat over death and the joy of the resurrection at Pascha. This is what our Christ did for us. He never promised us any earthly peace, happiness, or riches. In fact, he says, as a follower of me, you will be persecuted. As a follower of me, you will have to leave everything behind. As a father, follower of me, you will lose family and friends. Do you love me? enough to do that. This is the expectation he sets, but in our minds, we have different wants of our God. Certainly, it does not help that we live in a, a country, in a Western culture that have seen as our Christ as some kind of a ATM. You young people, you may not know what that is. You put a card into a machine and you get money out, your money back from a bank. And so we kind of want to put something into our faith, into our Lord, and we want to withdraw something from Him. We expect something because I did good. I did. I followed the rules. I was persecuted once for your name. I stood up for you. Lord, can you give me something, some blessings, some earthly showing that uh, I'm in good favor with you? You see, this is not how it works. We have to endure to the end, brothers and sisters. We have to endure all the difficulties that are laid upon us in this world, just like our Lord did. And then, and then we are granted a hundredfold, a hundredfold of what we put in to our faith on this world, in the kingdom of heaven. And so when we are going in a cycle in our lives where we feel a little bit of darkness impeding into our lives. Doubt. Who of us doesn't doubt? 
who of us doesn't doubt all the things that the church and the Bible proclaims of our Lord? For us who, with simple faith and weakness, of course, that doubt is going to creep in. But let us remember that this is not what the, the Lord didn't promise us such great miracles in our lives. He says we can overcome them spiritually. We can overcome them by the grace of God, by fleeing from the world. And ultimately, that is what he gives us, an opportunity to repent, an opportunity to grow closer to him by fulfilling the commandments, by showing love and charity and being positive person in this negative world. And we can grow like him, but it's not easy. The difficulties will not be taken away. The temporary death of our friends and loved ones will not be taken away. But eternally it will. And so today let us look forward, not as the people of Jerusalem did, short-sighted, wanting what they think and demand of their Lord, what their expectations were, let us not have expectations of God. Let us not have our worldly understanding of who he is, because it leads to heartache. Let us understand him as he said he is. He's the Lord of hosts. He's the king of heaven, of the new Jerusalem. Not on earth, but in heaven. And he has a seat for us, each and every one of us. You and me has a seat for every one of us in his court. That's what he promises us. And we have to endure to the end, even to death on a cross, perhaps, that we shall witness in just a few days that he did himself. He's always showing us the way. He's showing us how. All throughout his life, it was to show us how to live our lives. Let's emulate him to the best of our ability. And let us give thanks as we heard in the epistle today. It's quite a beautiful ending of Paul's epistle to the Thessalonians. Quite beautiful. It says that with all things give supplications and thanksgiving. All things find the beauty and the good in this world. All things have hope. This is what God gives us in the next life. Hope. Beauty. And if we can find a way to give thanksgiving today for all the things that he has given us to, to, to be live in a, just a meager way today, the simple things of our lives, if we can find a way to be thankful for that, then we get a little piece of what's waiting for us in heaven. We will do a moleben to uh, praise God on this great feast day that he enters into Jerusalem as king. Let us hold our palms and our pussy willows uh, with pride and joy, knowing that our Lord has revealed himself to us. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen.